opportunity right is for future uh, thanks to yeah, great uh, so climate and climate change and how to change that has come has arrived in the middle of our society and Tom is going to talk about the role of digitalization and in the climate protection. <laughs> okay, now it's working. Yeah, all fine. And just a brief thing beforehand. We have a brief technical break. We're very sorry for that. We're going to have some intermission activities here. And let me ask you questions about the sleeping habits of the audience. Show of hands, please. Who has slept more than the required six hours? Show of hands, please. Oh, that's great. So who has slept between four and six hours? Yeah, less people. Two hours or less? All right, that's OK. Now uh, the talk is going to start. OK. A very awake p uh, audience, that's nice. Technical mistakes or problems are always an ever occurring problem for us at Fridays for the Future. And I'm a participant in Fri for Fridays of the Future for about a year. And I came today. Please delete the internet. No, no, just small change, a small joke. Of course, we're not against digitalization. In no, 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 no. We really like to use digitalization ourselves. Here's a demo from Berlin with Greta Thunberg, who um, who had who held a very um, powerful speech um, one year ago, and that was very inspiring for me. So that I wanted to become part of this movement and not just part of the general climate movement. And what do we want? We talk about climate justice. So it's a typical chanting on the uh, at the demonstrations, climate justice now. And, and of course, the 1.5 degrees uh, objective is something that a lot of people talk about. But it's still very abstract. And what you can do, of course, is to look actually into the literature of climate justice. And, and we, s but we, we still try to figure out what climate justice specifically means. So there's still some room for interpretation. But there are also other topics that we care about. And the climate protection that we do is anti uh, anti nazi and feministic and we also have some additional demands for germany which have received some response and so we demand a zero so netto zero x um um, CO2 emissions and so if you if you remove trees you should also um, replant trees so that you always balance things out and that's our demand for 2035 and because of the current trends we think it should actually be earlier now we also demand getting out of coal power by 2030 and we demand 100% renewable energy sources until 2035 and we consider digitalization to be essential and necessary for this. And what we demand until the end of this year is the end of subventions for fossil fuels and that one quarter of all 
coal power plants shut, shall be shut down. And all of this should happen as quickly as possible. And the CO2 tax should be increased to 180, 100, uh, 180 euros per ton as quickly as possible. So we did a lot of agenda setting. So these these type of pictures are something that uh, a lot of people have seen for the first time this year. And I actually saw this myself three times this year live. And it's it induces so much rage and fury to see these things and to talk to people who actually live near these uh, excavation sites. So this image, uh, this is um, from the Hambach um, excavation site next to the Hambach forest, forest, just to really illustrate the local destruction of nature due to coal excavations. But of course here we want to talk about digitalization. We like to call on, we like to refer to the science. We, so there's the scientists for futures, as the, sci the, the group scientists for future, and they said that digitalization is, they say that digitalization is not the problem, but that it is a tool that we must use properly. If it only serves the economy and the increase of economic activity, then of course we will have a rise in emissions, but this is not what we should aim for. And it's important to really use digitalization properly in the interest of nature. And this is not only... And we're using digitalization for our own purposes. And but, but, but in my opinion, the economic factor is one of the greatest victories for the Fridays for the Futures um, movement. Um, and we are a lot of people. So, and what is really amazing is that these protests happened in more than 600 locations. So we had a lot of technical trouble to have the audio at all of these um, demonstrations and to make sure that everything is coordinated. So, so what I consider the positive political message is that that there was this um, um, this um, <laughs> so survey. Um, we see that a lot of the population in Germany is very much for climate protection. And and I think this is really impressive and I don't know how the current numbers look like and here's like a little equation that I thought about it yesterday um, it, it should not only be about economic uh, economy economic activity it should not only be as about surveillance so if we have if you have less surveillance then of course we have less emissions and this is something we can all in this room together agree on and fight for so in total we had tried we tried to not follow this uh, these steps but instead we we tried to stay under the 1.5 um, degrees uh, limit and we went on to the streets many many times this year and and I have to admit that this talk <laughs> well it this, this talk has been following the tendency of first procrastinate and then improvise because after powering through all these weeks for the strikes, 
um, I'm like exhausted. And this is not only about the strikes themselves, but also about the communication. And if you see, look at these people uh, who are on this picture, all of them, or pretty much all of them, have been there every week. And it's not like just one big demonstration, but just but recurring demonstrations every week. And we see that there's a lot of messages and it's, it's very difficult to filter what is good information, what is bad information. And, and in some cities we have decided not to go to on the streets every week. And we have to improve this and I want to include this here because maybe here are people in this room who have a solution for better communications in the movement. But of course, so easy it will probably not be, probably it will not be so simple because this is how Fridays for the Future looks in Germany and it's very hard to see the forest for the trees. And the communication with such a massive number of people is really difficult and there are a lot of critical points and one example is like the coordination of this talk so that I am giving this talk is actually a privilege for myself and that I am that I have grown up in Germany and and that I have a bit more experience than other people but but it's also because I know specific people and of course we can't coordinate with everyone in the movement who actually stands here is giving and is giving this talk and of course there are disputes internally but through these disputes we actually grow but the people who actually go onto the streets, those are the people who just sa said like one year ago, yeah, there something has to be done about the climate. But now, but now people actually start questioning economic systems. They really grew and we reach out to international organizations and 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 now it's uh, these young people have learned to give themselves a voice that hasn't been heard before we wouldn't be us if we weren't just continuing and I'm going to reiterate that tomorrow there's going to be another demonstration and I'm going to participa participate and I will be very, very happy about every single person who joins us. I just really, really uh, rushed through my talk right now. But maybe that's not so bad after all. We're going to be here, we're going to be very happy to be here at, at events like this. Uh, what other things are we planning for next year? As I uh, already told you, we are uh, concerned about coal a lot. And next year there's Datteln 4. Um, that's a coal plant in NRV who burns a stone coal and this coal isn't being mined in Germany. Maybe some of you remember that, uh, that Steinmeier um, gave a very moving ceremony for the last uh, bit of coal mined in Germany. And now we have a power plant that is going to come online for the first time in Germany. And just consider this. And you can be sure that Fridays for Future is uh, going to put a lot of pressure on this event. We're going to be um, at this event and we're going to be joining um, other organizations with the similar goals. And this year we have learned how it works to network with other actors and organizations and be, uh, have mutually beneficial arrangements. 
Uh, we've been in the Rhineland where there's civil disobedience um, incidents. And on the other side, there's young people um, who live near these mines um, who are taking to the streets. And then there's demonstrations such as all the villages stay who were also there demonstrating against the coal plants. And so we've met people, young and old, local, from abroad, and we've joined together and we've protested. And these images of joint protests were carrying out into the world to show people and I've showed you this map of Germany with the pins and on a European level we aren't as connected to each other. There's going to be a, uh, a convention in Turin next year called SMILE who, where we are going to look at the European level and building up these European networks. The number of uh, participants in the demonstrations may have risen but we have, uh, sorry, they may have gone down, but we have built something unique in my opinion. We are not just people going out to demonstrate or me giving talks and you're listening, but we are coming together. People are coming together under this umbrella. So I'm very much looking forward to the Q&A later. And to show you a picture again, it's just not 200,000 people in Berlin, but uh, every week at least 100 uh, youths meet to plan these demonstrations. And this, a lot of this happens digitally via WhatsApp. And this digital mobilization is what we need in these climate protests. We have uh, built a website where you can s uh, see and look for cheap flights to book. But they weren't real, of course. That was um, to point out that flying is bad for the climate. And this uh, is a way of taking protests from the streets to the internet. And what makes me really very happy is um, when I talk to people about Fridays for Future is when they tell me uh, what they think about our organization. So um, we uh, tend towards having our own opinions, even if it's just an audience Q&A. So can we start that Q&A now? So, Tom, thank you for the vortrag. Thank you, uh, thank you for our talk. So, there's a lot of time now for questions. Um, there will be the, the first question from the internet will come right up. Um, who, if anyone else has questions, please do approach the microphones. So, this is a question from the internet, um, who um, clearly was at these demonstrations. Um, he's sick of being protested um, against by people who are on the other side of the political field. So, that's actually um, a difficult topic. We always have um, scenarios where people um, are hateful towards us. Um, I've seen approach. I've, I've seen passerbys um, spit at people. Um, we've, we had a case in Berlin where um, right extremists um, proclaimed um, to proclaim they would um, destroy this uh, demonstration. There are these structures. Um, you can uh, reach to which uh, protect you against um, these right extremist people. They are um, they are always open to help you. They are always friendly towards you. Um, we are currently trying to build up a um, Germany-wide um, help group to help you against these right-wing um, approaches. Maybe um, that isn't quite built up yet, so maybe you um, should approach local sources. Um, this will be treated um, with um, respect. 
wherever you go, just make sure wherever you go is a place you can trust. Good, then we go to the guys. Microphone number one, please. So microphone number one, please. My question is, and that is what I call you, um, is that really a good idea in, to um, make people pay money for CO2? That Because that would also... Um, that would also encourage uh, economic economic uh, opportunities in that. Um, I did vote against the Green Point, which um, um, which encourages further um, economic development in the trash handling business. Um, maybe you have another um, idea of how to solve this. So I believe um, um, the trash that we um, burn and we blast into the atmosphere, we don't see that. Um, maybe I think about, I often think about if whether the um, this um, CO2 tax is a sensible solution, but um, I think um, it may be a sufficient tool to um, make companies, not single persons, but established companies be worried about um, be worried about doing more emissions. So we we haven't come as far yet as um, to the point where coal energy doesn't doesn't add up an anymore. So we would have to improve these prices. We found out that there is actually um, there is actually. Um, a a tax thing, a tax return where um, money is being paid back to the people so that there isn't any um, bad notices around these CO2 tax. There's, there's this giant carpet of um, solutions to this. Um, this is one of the things we do view as sensible. Microphone number two, please. Do you also discuss um, in some form of base or in some form of um, voting circles um, whether you do want to um, protest in schools as well? So maybe you would um, even strike inside the schools themselves. Maybe you would um, build up a media for that. Well, I'm no longer a student. Um, I do not know that. There are always um, suggestions and feedback. There's always suggestions and there's always feedback in that topic. Um, you may um, you may uh, intend on asking for about something else where there would be gigantic um, meetings and gigantic uh, opportunities for people to strike in schools. Um, my idea would be to um, spend your time um, that you usually would spend on the streets um, to uh, invite teachers, invite older people, um, to discuss with them on a um, less on a basis that is less violent than um, we are trying to um, move away from that um, Fridays in school thing. So um, in Berlin, right after um, that um, disobedience, we um, talk, talked about um, the about topics and all other all sorts of other things um, to um, to make to educate us and to um, make us more knowledgeable. So we do want to do that, but it's not been done until now. Hello, this is the circle. I do want to ask you um, whether you want to try and um, bring this into parliament or um, fund a party for this as right now it's only on um, the streets there are the greens there is the green party but um, in the german parliament and in the european parliament there isn't really that much climate um, climate oriented parties we are not. Um, we do not uh, support any party as an organization. There is a discussion internally on um, how to approach these topics. That is um, handled on an individual scale. We don't. We do not want to make a party. We are 
um, organized very differently from parties. Um, we do have some uh, dem base, basic democrac democratic um, base work, uh, but we are different from uh, parties in many ways. We don't really fit into that role quite well. We're not really um, institutionalized, we're not really official, we're not a party. Um, many of us are political, many of us do engage in these um, political topics, but and we also um, do speak to MEPs or um, MDPs in, that, in those fields, but um, overall there is not really this organization. We do see that in small bits though. Another question from the internet. So you spoke about IT infrastructure. Um, there was a talk yesterday about the IT infrastructure of Extension Rebellion. Um, do you exchange in that topic and do you use your other systems? Right up until now we have our separate infrastructure. Um, I do have to admit though that I'm not in that field of knowledge. I don't um, deal with these website related things and this detailed um, communication. There are people who do that here. You can visit them. Of course we try and um, of course we try and cooperate. Um, as right now we're not in that much stress, um, as we're not protesting every Friday. Um, most things are signal groups which are joined between Extinction Rebellion and Fridays for Future. So we as a um, we as a organization use email. If you, whenever you read a an article or a thread on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, about you, um, there's always there's always people who um, laugh about your organization, who always complain about you being not that climately reasonable as well. Um, there's people who get really um, offended by that. Do you have a strategy? Um, on how to deal with this. Do you think this is okay? Um, or do you uh, think that people don't really know they can play an own role? Well, we do want to, tr we do try to um, get people to moderate these um, common sections. We haven't, we haven't found a good solution yet. We have to view this um, organization in Germany um, as only being one year old. So, so in some parts we're very much overwhelmed by the situation in some places. We should um, treat these matters more um, accurately though. Um, mainly on Twitter and Instagram we um, try and communicate with people who have um, who have experience in these themes so um, that we can successfully do this uh, social media thing. We should of course work on that um, for longer. Another question from the internet? Well, the internet is emotionally quite distressed. Um, how does this look on the personal level um, to um, to go with this organization and to be faced with this ignorance on um, climate change? Um, there's, of course, there's people who think people just want other people just want to see children suffer. How do you view this situation? I can only answer this personally for myself. Um, for myself, I, um, whenever I, s whenever I see this acutely, whenever I see this um, as a whole, um, when it, whether that's uh, racism or sexism, I do notice that very much at the beginning. I do see this pretty much immediately. Um, I may also be able to speak for this entire hall um, that this is the same um, with climate topics it's m even more abstract there's not that many people who actually do hit you 
that's more easy um, doing this is more easy when you only treat numbers um, but for me personally it's just um, retreat um, retreat to the front lines uh, that's why I'm active that's uh, why I do this, if I just sat on my ass, then I wouldn't really, I would explode inside. There, is, there are many institutions who, do, who deal with this. Um, there, for example, there is Psychology for Future, which are psychologists who, um, who deal with topics such as um, the aspect of hate, the aspect of activism in that field. Um, this is very fru this topic is very frustrating. I do not really want to do this. Another question from the room. Um, you said you try you were trying to be um, above party level. There are um, there are um, requests to diff diff diverge to. Um, change Article 20A um, to make it German zero, to make it a German zero law. I have to say I do not really understand this um, this German zero thing. We do not have a, a, an opinion on that as a um, movement, but the people who do um, who did this, who made this possible, already had successful campaigns. Um, there was a, um, a people's vote in Berlin, which was successful. Um, so it's not this is this is not going backwards. There is development in that um, direction. Our next, if that's going to be our next coup, I don't know. Microphone number three. Do you um, do you also have people who? Um, care about the technology behind that. Um, of course you can say we should all exit coal, um, but that would also mean um, we had we would have to build that many other power plants or X amount of um, wind power plants. So these propositions look very small and abstract, um, but we, but we've been doing this for months, and we talked to so many different researchers about this. There are many, there's many, there are many informations on this um, on our website. If you go to a, the FAQ and visit the forum, then. Um, you will see that everything we um, request from governments and everything we want to pull through with um, is actually possible. There are many people invested in actually thinking about what we would need for this change. Back to the internet. You mentioned multiple times you had extremely difficult and um, spaced out um, decision processes. Can you um, explain how this works and can you explain how you do this? First of all, we are decentralized in these um, local groups and the best thing about that is that they are autonomous on themselves. They can um, do almost anything they want. Um, they can do what they want, basically. Um, these groups all have um, all have representatives who um, do a weekly um, phone conference within different regions um, where you can um, manage these certain um, these certain events and what you want to do. This will be carried over by the representatives into the um, local groups and be and this will be decided about there. This isn't the optimal process because this takes some time. Um, for the different groups um, there are also um, self-explanatory things um, that are um, predistinguished by their work fields. This isn't perfect. I believe this is really difficult to get perfect. Um, we've been discussing about this matter for a very long time. 
um, was ich we have a, we have a um, structurization spreadsheet, um, which is kind of, which I as myself um, regard as a very unnecessary measure. Um, yeah, we had just have to think about this. Microphone number one, next question. Again, thank you um, for starting all this movement. Um, I just wanted to tell you and this whole hall, um, there is actually developers for future. There are so many different groups um, who are invested in this climate thing. Um, I wanted to ask how known this is there could you maybe do an announcement for that there are parents for future artists for future all these different groups i would be interested um what has to happen so that everyone wakes up everyone gets involved in this when, when i listen to um politics and science um who always talk about these um how many how much co2 do we have left how much um base of movement do we have um, it's always being talked about seven years we have seven years we have seven more years um, this all doesn't sound that dramatic and I just want to um, be active um, just know, want to know how to spread this information further on what does what has to happen what do we have to do this is a question to everyone um, because this um, this was responsibility isn't only with Fridays for Future, it, this is for everyone. Applause, and I support that. Um, what is important for me is that this has to carry on. Um, what can we do is also a question we have to ask ourselves. Um, this, I'm very happy about these initiatives, but we didn't really start with this. Um, climate justice movements have been going on for such a long time, and we don't know them. We don't, we don't, we don't name these names. We don't name um, these activists who... Um, actively fight people and other people in the rainforest who actively get murdered by corrupt governments for fighting for their own um, for their own survival so all these people who are locked and who are um, under suppressed and um, forcefully denied um, are our um, founding fathers, so to say. Uh, we, and I don't want to say that we as Fridays for Future started this, as it is just not justified. Next question is from the internet again. On the different levels of Fridays for Future, how are um, demonstrations and protests managed? Are there any problems regarding that? That is very depending on on place. Um, in some parts, these weekly st uh, strikes have been have developed into critically um, close groups. Um, it's just it's just basically um, it depends on the location. There are many places where there is um, bricks in the way of this um, path. You always get these um, questions and bad things to hear from even policemen and policewomen. We can't really say that um, we are all pretty much chill with that. We have, um, we have some sort of natural distance from that and we just have to see how this changes further on. One more question, microphone one. Thank you very much for your engagement and thank you very much um, for pushing um, this topic into everyone's mind who he can hear it. Um, my practical question, um, when you look into, um, into energy more, um, you will see that um, regenerative technologies and regenerative um, electricity doesn't run continuously um, and that this is a very difficult solution. Um, well, I don't want you to answer this. I, want, I would want um, 
politicians, the ones who we have to put this um, responsibility upon to answer this. Do you have um, any knowledge that you could um, put on politicians' desks? Of course, we didn't write this out in letters. Um, there are magnificent and wonderful people who um, help us with this knowledge, who help us communicate this knowledge. I myself study at the TU Berlin, and there's a group which is called Colexit. Um, they um, deal with how co the exit of coal energy would um, go in detail. Um, we aren't on that topic, we aren't researching this, um, but we do have some ideas. We're not on the stand where we can say um, we could do that tomorrow, but um, this, develop this development we want to um, watch more where there is um, where we see these um, regulations where um, Peter Admeyer wants to have a thousand meter distance between um, solar, no, uh, wind power plants and um, villages. We just have to continue on. There are um, multiple different ideas for this and you can speak to that later. Now we are running out of time. Uh, you can ask our speaker later after this uh, talk and are fully invited to um, keep this discussion up. Thank you for listening to the English Thank you.